Hey everyone, it's Caroline here. Oh, it's been a minute. It's been over a month since I have been on here. I'm in my makeshift office. You might hear extra noises than normal. I wanted to give an update um, about how I'm doing, how we're doing here in Western North Carolina. <sighs> you know, it's been it's been over a month now, and it's truly the first time that I have felt able to do this video. Um, I've been so in the experience and assimilating and uh, with the energies, with what has been happening in our worlds that I haven't been able to switch gears, so, um, so to speak. But first, I want to say thank you uh, to all of those who've reached out to ask how me and my family are doing, to ask how to help, how to donate, and I will post some links uh, below uh, to where our just boots on the ground, uh, legit, amazing organizations that have really been saving lives, saving, saving animals' lives, and so those will be um, on the bottom so this is just me sharing uh, some of my own experience and personal stories. Uh, there's no meditation or anything like that in this video. Uh, so again, thank you. You know, I really mean that from the bottom of, of my heart. And I know I speak for many here that your support, your love, your prayers uh, whether that has been a uh, prayer in the unseen to financial donations has really been the lifeline for us here in Western North Carolina. I live about 20 minutes outside of Asheville. And it's, I mean, it's been unreal. And I have lived through Hurricane Hugo in Charleston, South Carolina when I was a child. I've been in fires in Northern California when I lived in the Sierras, I've been in earthquakes, you know, it's like I've kind of like gone through a lot of the gamut and I've really, truly have never seen anything like this. And, you know, not just that I haven't seen anything like this because I'm not necessarily going around to natural disasters, but those uh, that have helped us who have come in military, um, FEMA help, uh, who really are, uh, that's what they do. Sorry for my dog barking in the background. Um, you know, that's what they do is to help disaster social workers um, areas. And they have said, I've never seen anything like this. Never have I seen anything like this in terms of what happened overnight to a landscape, to a people, to a town. But never had they seen a community come together and support one another. It was truly the community that were going up into the hollers to save lives. Yes, um, I'm not per, uh, you know, um, what's that word? I'm not saying that FEMA wasn't here, the government wasn't here, the military wasn't here. They were, and they are, and it, it took a minute for folks to get here. So in those first many days where it was dire straits, I mean, it was dire straits for a while, but those first few days, it was really the locals that uh, came together. It was truly community coming together. And I mean, in my own personal experience, we um, were okay and we've been okay. Our house, I have a house, which is, you know, that's where the bar is. I'm alive. My animals are alive and I have a home, you know, that's where the bar is at. And so it's small potatoes. What we did lose, I lost um, our downstairs flooded um, and has needed to be gutted since then. Uh, that is where my office was, it's where my ceremony room was, it's where I offered the prayers to for all of you. And so we're, you know, make shifting. I'm things have shifted. You will probably hear my animals more in the background in coming videos because I don't have that um, separation. But that is serious small potatoes compared to what has occurred here. And so the night of the hurricane, or the night before really when it was raining, which is so much of why it was so intense here, the, the amount of rain we got before the hurricane came, you know, we went out on that Wednesday night and to get supplies. And I 
you know, my family's in Charleston, South Carolina. We come from Harking um, country. My mom and my sister were texting me, make sure to get water. Where's your batteries, your lights, you know, be on that alert. And so we went out in the pouring rain and um, to get some groceries and water. And there was, it was surreal because we were like on mission of like, okay, we've got to do this now. And we went into the grocery store and it was like, everyone was like just doing their thing. There was no awareness um, because no one knew. I just, because I was more vigilant because of my past with hurricanes. But, um, you know, we heard actually a couple of people in the grocery. I was like, I think it might be, you know, I think we might lose power for a day or two. Um, but who knows? It might be that bad, but um, maybe not. Again, we live in the mountains. We are not preparing for hurricanes, right? Um, so that was Wednesday. And then Thursday, you know, was just like, it was raining a little bit, but it had it, it, um, um, tapered off. And we were just going about our day and got, um, we're just getting ready. So we started watching the um, news more closely. I messaged my friends that I'm close with of, you know, make sure you have some water for a couple days, you know, food. But again, we were like, oh, who knows? Maybe this won't even be a thing. And then we were watching the news, um, the weather, gosh, until late, late for us, you know, like late 10 o'clock, 1030 at night. And we went and downstairs to where, again, my office is, my ceremony room, and set up a bed and brought all of our animals down there because I'd gotten some alerts that uh, tornadoes are possible. So we went to the lower part of the house, you know, and we went to, went to sleep. And around uh, 4 a.m., the electricity went off because then all our smoke alarms went off. And my dogs totally freaked out. So I ended up giving them some Trazodone and I gave them too much. They're big, white, great Pyrenees and um, it helped them. But then, so that was around like four or five. I can't remember exactly now. My brain has been in like trauma brain for a month. And then we went to, well, my partner went to sleep and I was like, how are you sleeping? Um, so that was like, yeah, like around probably five, I think it was around five. And then. I somehow dozed off at some point because we woke up to everything filled with water and my cat was sitting on the high part of the, um, uh, this counter and was like, meow, meow. And I was like, and we looked and it was like, what is that noise? And we started, we were like starting to float because we were on the, on the floor. And I was like, oh shit, there's like water, you know, we were water and we didn't know how much would keep coming in. Uh, so it was like creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And so we got everybody, got the cats, but then my huge hundred and something pound dogs like wouldn't move. <laughs> we're like, oh God, okay, no, you know, I gave them too much trazodone. So I was like, we're getting them. And then one of my, my bigger one would not walk through the water because it was up pretty high for them. Finally got everyone up there. And, um, and then we just watched because the, you know, as the sun had come up at this point and, um, and thank goodness the electricity went off because we could have been electrocuted um, sleeping in water. And it was it was wild. It was truly unbelievable. Um, the wind, the huge trees had already gone down and missed our house by not that much. And then around 1030, we went outside and we saw some neighbors walking around. It had calmed down. Um, They're still very eerie. And we went outside to our neighborhood and a tornadoes had gone through our particular neighborhood. And I mean, just trees, huge trees in that like um, twist and uh, electric poles upside down thrown across the way. I mean, it was, it was, I'd never seen anything like it. The amount of trees, like you couldn't walk. I mean, it, it was wild. Um, so many people blocked in. And at that time we thought that like was like, oh, wow, that's bad. Not having any idea of what was occurring at that moment in Swannanoa, what was occurring at that moment in other places where people were literally losing their lives at that moment on rooftops. Um, but it wasn't good. I knew it wasn't good. I, I just felt so sick to my stomach. I told my partner, I was like, I'm, I, this isn't good. And I just felt so nauseous and I started crying and it's like, whoa, you, you know, everything's going to be fine. And I just felt, I was like, this is not fine. I could just feel it. Um, 
luckily we are on the the uh, side of the neighborhood that is we're just one one um, street over to the main road and our neighbor had uh, had a chainsaws and everything was getting cut out a pave uh, away so later that afternoon is this right it might have been the next day so sorry this is this is it my mind um so it was either that later that day no it was the next day um uh went to bed that night and i woke up in a way I, I hadn't woken up in years and years and years with this terror in in the liminal realms um in this liminal space this lucid dream i was having i just kept seeing all these faces of men and women and children and they were just crying out and I could feel them leaving. I could feel this in between and I woke up and just wailed and wailed and I, and it was uncontrollable. It was just this act of, um, being present with what was, and I didn't exactly know what was happening, but I knew that there was great loss and I just cried and wailed and wailed. And I feel grateful for that movement of energy and witnessing them, um, so then the next day we got out and I was able to get to this one spot down the road in Fairview. Fairview was hit really hard um, as well, not as hard as one I know in other places. And I was able to call my sister. I couldn't, you know, no one around here was service. I didn't know if my friends were okay, our, you know, community of 20 years. Um, but I could call my sister who's in Charleston and she was letting me know. She calls me sissy. I'm going to cry. She's just like crying. She's like, sissy, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Um, and that was the beginning of our realities being radically shifted, radically different. The transformation um, that has occurred and keeps occurring and will continue to occur. And, you know, so that's my personal story of the immediacy. So again, you know, it's like my basement uh, that was finished my office and everything was full of water you know again small potatoes compared to so many uh it wasn't till we had a radio i uh, think everyone get a radio a battery powered solar powered radio like old school radio um that was our lifeline to be able to see what was going on and the stories that were coming in just brought me down to my knees every hour you know, it's like you're in your own little bubble. You really couldn't go too far. I was able to get out for a little bit, but you can't drive too far. And, you know, and then our community, our neighbors, it's, you know, I barely knew my neighbors. We all keep to ourselves besides like, you know, hi, when we're walking the dogs. And that's been an incredible gift and beauty to see community and to see all the barriers, um, the us, the them, the you know, the division that's been so prevalent in our world and continues to be so prevalent, all of that has been gone. And it's, I have cried every single day since September 28th. And some of the times it's because of just feeling the pain, hearing another story of loss. Um, and just as much I have cried by the kindness of strangers, by the the way that love has also ripped through our community just as much as the river and the water ripped through our community. It is truly uh, a miracle to behold. And the resilience, the love is palpable. It has restored my hope in humanity. I it truly has changed me and it's changed all those that I have spoken to, you know, the, the helpers in the seen and the unseen realms being amplified every single day. It, it's it, the helpers, all of you from out of state, um, seeing trucks come in. I mean, I've, the military come in to, do the, you know, the search and rescue, the amount of help that has been offered to our region from supplies, from food, from water, cadaver dogs, you know, what those people, this job that they sign up for and they have come and tirelessly done for this past month. It has been truly, um, it's changed all of us. And 
you know, at a time I'm recording this um, Monday before the election here in the U S it'll probably get posted the day of the election in the U S and it's just the, the us and them who are you voting for blah, 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 all of that, you know, that was laid down to rest, you know, people who are clearly in different spectrums of what they're voting clearly in different spectrums of maybe even what, um, before all this, what we could say they valued, all of that is gone. You know, the, the amount of help of people that would never cross paths before, um, making sure everyone has food, making sure everyone has water, spending all of their life force hiking up into haulers that to make sure people are okay, pulling bodies out, um, the intensity, um, the loss of life, the loss of um, the landscape. It's truly been unbelievable. And the thing that's holding all of that together is love and community and oneness. And so I share that and I hope maybe this is getting a little bit long now, but can be a reminder, especially on the day of the election and the days following the election, when the shit hits the fan, you don't care who voted for what. And the people who might be on the other side of who you are judging, if they vote a different way than you, they might be the people that's like, you know what? I have some food. Do you need anything? And I just, I feel so blessed by this experience as much as it has ripped my heart in two. Um, the, the, the loss that some people have endured the love is palpable and it's profoundly healing. And that truly is what the new earth is. That is, you know, we can, especially in the, the world that I reside in and the world of, you know, we can talk about the 5D and, you know, the, the helpers and, you know, the, the way of the new earth and all these things that can be really esoteric. And um, I won't even get into that right now. It's, to live that, to see like, oh, this is an action duality moving into oneness, right? It's like the, dropping all of that. So I'm a little bit at broken record at the moment. So I, I apologize. Um, and thanks for sticking with me. So I really encourage you to, to, to sit in that field of what would it be like to drop judgment? What would it be like to have love? for the person that you might not want to and vice versa. You know, uh, I tell you what, the people who have helped us tremendously, I mean, I, I don't know how I would feel about me if I were them, to be honest, <laughs> you know, uh, we're like a little, you know, we're not the, we are not um, conservative Christian. We're not um, living in a way that they live and none of that mattered. You know, none of that mattered. So I just share all this um, from the point of view. It felt weird to jump on here and offer a meditation or offer a different video without first acknowledging what is and what has been for this past month. And because I'm different where I sit, the landscape, the energy field around the earth is different and that relationship informs how I am in all moments and will inform how I can show up for you. And there's still so much um, needed here in this region. People are still without homes. There's a tent city. Um, it being the Samhain portal still, I've been very passionate about tending to the dead. I don't know why they have like botched the numbers and I, and you know, there's been like, oh, conspiracy, like they're making the numbers too much or too little. And, you know, the the government or a sit of our, our local paper was like, please don't exaggerate numbers. It's like 42 or something like that. And, um, and I honestly don't know why they would um, not really give the whole picture because just of the, the people I know and the people firsthand, I haven't seen myself, but firsthand account of people I can count to almost that much and I'm one person um, and I've been really passionate 
from this whole experience of tending to the dead. We don't live in a culture that knows how to do that. And it's so important to honor those that have lost their lives. There's some profound stories. I won't go on to it now. I might share in another video um, or make links to um, some stories that really highlight people's last actions in life being one of love and sacrifice so their children can survive. Um, yes, so I thank you. I thank you for being part of my community. I thank you for uh, checking in on me. And I thank you for holding this whole region um, in your prayers and in your thoughts. We're still very much and will be for a long time in need. Um, the amount of animals that are displaced is unreal. So if you have it in your heart or you have room in your home to foster an animal or even adopt a one, please consider an animal from around here. Um, it's It breaks my heart how many animals are uh, displaced right now. And also how many animals have died. Uh, there was a coyote actually down in Biltmore um, that's just been devastated. There was a coyote this afternoon in traffic. So confused and displaced. So that's like the level, you know, it's like, whoa. Um, and so I could keep going on and on. So I will leave it at this. Um, love, love prevails. You know, love prevails. And it has been such a blessing, as I mentioned, a gift to be able to answer that inquiry of, you know, what happens when your world is falling apart? What happens when the apocalypse, as you know, we know it, comes here? And, you know, I didn't know that before. I could have intellectually or hoped but to see that in when there's no food, no water, no way to communicate, people actually open their hearts and give more. That there has been an enormous amount of love and support and community within the people who are also dealing with immense trauma. People didn't contract and create conflict. People actually were brought to their knees and said, I don't have much but what do you need? So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful humanity uh, rising and humanity's heart is uh, alive and well here. So thank you, my loves. And I will see you um, in the next video with more of what I normally share. There'll be um, a video coming out with the Samhain portal and how important it is. Uh, to tend to the other world and to allow the other world to um, have an influence in your life that can really uh, shift your awareness and your consciousness. All right, loves, be well.